All right, what's up, everybody? This is Alex from Xtrades, and welcome back to another weekly trade ideas list. I hope everybody had a wonderful trading week last week, had a good weekend. It was a very insane weekend. Unfortunately, there was an attempt on the former president, Donald Trump's life, at one of his rallies over the weekend, so that was very crazy. Make sure to keep the family of the deceased in your prayers. Keep the Trump family in your prayers. Even if you don't agree with them or anything like that, we don't want political violence in our country, and it's just unheard of in our generation. We really haven't seen something like this in a very long long time. But despite that, we really didn't see any impact in the markets from that. Luckily, futures are relatively flat tonight. And it looks like on Robinhood 24-hour markets, DJT, which is Donald Trump's SPAC, is doing pretty well in the 24-hour trading. I think it's up about 20% or more. So that's one you could keep on watch this week, but I do have some other tickers on watch. Obviously, when it comes to big rudders like that, lots of times you can be a little bit too late and I don't like to chase into the highs. So just be careful with that. Congrats if you took DJT calls before the weekend because they're probably going to pay pretty good. But if you tuned in last week, we had a pretty good list. We had WBA calls on watch, which had a all right week. I feel like it could have done better and I'm still in WBA calls as we speak. It did have one good run, maybe about four or five percent, and it kind of stalled out since then. I think my September calls are up about six percent or something like that. So I'm still in those. We also had SQ. SQ did very well. It kind of had a slow start and did back test our downtrend line but from that back test i mean it's been pretty much vertical so sq had a really good week closed out friday very strong hopefully you caught that one we also had moderna which bounced directly from our trend line had a pretty good run definitely ran enough to where your calls should have paid on multiple different expiration dates so hopefully you chose a good expiration date hopefully those paid out pretty good as well and overall we just had a really good week i would say so we are continuing our streak which is going pretty good right now for open trades i got wba 12.5 calls that's for september two months to expiration up about seven percent also have september nike 75 calls down just a little bit that's about two months out for september monthlies we also took a bunch of scalps this week you can see they all got the machine learning filter for higher accuracy this one had a 68 percent chance of being a winner made a little bit on that this one had an 82 percent chance of being a winner we made about 24 percent on this actually the data vendor was just a little bit delayed so when I entered the contract, it moved so fast. It was showing I was already up like 10% by the time I entered. So I actually got in at 210, I think, and then we got a 259, so it was about 24%. And at a pretty good rating in the machine learning filter with a high probability. Same thing for this one, QQQ 496 calls. This one had a 70% chance of being a winner. We made about 24% on that one as well. So we averaged about 24% between all three of these. Continuing our streak, it's going pretty good. Like I said, a couple weeks ago, we had two losses, kind of ruin our streak there. Overall, still a really good kind of run we have going with minimal losses. So hopefully we can continue that. Just kind of doing QQQ scalps, picking up longer dated stuff, being patient on those. So for our economic calendar this week, it's actually very dead. We don't really have any big data sets coming out. We do have Fed Chair Jerome Powell speaking. I believe it's just going to be like some regular conversation. It's going to be at noon. Not sure if he's going to comment on monetary policy or not. So I took a screenshot of the Fed calendar. It's at 1230. It's going to be a discussion with David M. Rubenstein, Chairman of the economic club of washington they'll probably talk about the economy maybe policy maybe jerome powell will say something that we want to hear when he testified in congress last week i don't think it really moved the market too much but overall we had a pretty good week in the stock market is pretty bullish and then on tuesday real quick we have retail sales that's really the only important thing going on here none of this other stuff really matters thursday you can maybe pay attention to the philly fed survey sometimes that can move the market but it really just depends same thing with initial jobless claims like that just depends depends how extreme the reading is depends if it beats or misses and how extreme the beat or miss is for it to really impact the market then on friday just a couple of fed speakers so really only this week the only important thing is going to be retail sales and probably fed chair powell on monday and then you got retail sales on tuesday nothing else no pmis no ism no cpi no ppi no no non-farm payrolls, nothing. Just retail sales and Fed Powell. And we'll cover the seasonality real quick before we get into our setups. I'm kind of recording this a little bit later than I wanted to. Finding setups this week took me a little bit longer to chart through my 200 plus stickers to find the three that I wanted. So starting a little bit later, it's currently like 9 p.m. Eastern. This video might not be up till midnight or later. So July 15th to the 19th, we got SPY here, 20 year seasonality, 75% winning trades to the long side over the last 20 years with a summarized profit at 9%. If you go down to the 10-year, it might be a little bit similar, but sometimes we'll see a little bit different. 
you can see winning trades to the long side at 60%, summarized profit at 1%. So a little bit slower than the 20 year. 20 year is ultra bullish. 10 year looking a little bit more quiet, but you got winning trades for the last 20 years here. 75% of the time being winners with a gnarly summarized profit. So seasonality looking pretty bullish. Last week's was also bullish. So it was the week before that. It's actually been a pretty accurate month so far in terms of seasonality and following the pattern. It's basically just been straight up with maybe a pullback or two between their consolidation. But it looks like we won't really see any slowdown until the end of the month. And then once we get into August, the markets really get slow. Same with September. So you got to be careful in those two months. Definitely the market can see some selling. But for right now, no signal to sell. The Almanac did show Monday being a potential bearish day for tomorrow. But otherwise, seasonality for this whole week, looking pretty bullish, good winning trade percentage, high summarized profit over the last 20 years. All right, and on to the setups. We'll go over Nike first. I'm already in these, so I wanted to just add this to the list in case anybody is not in Nike. Could be worth a watch. Obviously, with the indexes kind of hitting highs and kind of getting to a point where it's a little bit more tough to buy, we're starting to see a little bit of rotation into small caps like IWM. We've seen a bunch of other junk pumping, so maybe we can get a chance at some laggards to kind of pick up. Obviously, Nike had a pretty bad quarter, sold off very aggressively during earnings, and now kind of been chilling in a very low RSI territory, kind of just been staying oversold, making a lower lows, potential lower highs, trending under all the moving averages. But overall, I feel like this gap will eventually fill. So if you want to keep Nike on watch for the longer term, maybe September minimum, that's what I'm in, September monthlies, I feel like calls are pretty good here. We have Kitty J starting to curl up to the upside after being negative this whole period. So maybe this Kitty J uptick here and crossover to the upside could be giving us a little bit of a signal to the upside. Obviously, we don't have a great signal here. We don't have big volume bouncing off the bottom. We don't have a double bottom pattern. We don't have inverse head and shoulders. We have nothing like that. It's kind of just a dead cap bounce if it were to bounce here. So Nike, a little bit more contrarian, but definitely keep your eyes out. Big gap. Eventually, it's probably going to want to fill. And if people find Nike at a value trade right now, they might want to start investing into value. So that's for Nike. I'm looking at calls. Very simple. It's very oversold. Potential KDJ cross to the upside. Big gap above that could fill eventually. Just buy time and be patient on it. All right. Number two, we're going over Neo real quick. So I'm usually pretty selective on when I'm looking at China because China sucks. Their stocks are always selling off. But lately, we've kind of been getting a little bit of momentum in Baba, Baidu, Neo, stuff like that. They've kind of been doing okay. But now you got Neo here breaking out of this little mini channel. Test one, test two, test three rejection. And now a breakout. Lower channel line, test one, test two, test three, even a test four candle right here. So nice little channel now breaking out of that. One thing you have in the way, 50 SMA or 50 day moving average. Need to get over that above that 50 day moving average. Lots of room, maybe even up to the 200 SMA. These dots all the way up here, maybe up to $6, something like that. If you're skeptical of options, you could even look at shares. I mean, it's so damn cheap. It's $4.87 a share right now. But like I said, we'll need to get over that 50 SMA. You got a positive KDJ, so that's good. A little bit of momentum shifting to the upside for this indicator. RSI, no signal really. It's just back over the 50 middle line. It's not oversold, not overbought. Getting over that 50 SMA will be key. Because obviously, it was res right here. It's also a support bounce at this area. So it's obviously respected, and we want to get over that. So this for NEO. I'm looking at calls, if you want to be safe, get a longer dated exp. That way you have lots of time on expiration to deal with drawdown risk or any China bullshit. That could be a good idea. And like I said, just a simple channel breakout play. Looking pretty cheap. Maybe China can get some momentum. It's been a little bit oversold. So let's go China. Maybe we can see a pump. All right. And last but not least for our individual tickers, we did have unity here actually a couple weeks ago i think it was actually back at this candle yeah so here was the friday that closed and we were looking at calls i believe the weekend of that june 21st period so we had one good day one big push-up candle went up about five percent could have paid out for you and then ever since then it's kind of been trending back down but now we've actually made if we zoom in we have two tests of support at 1523. We also have a close over that resistance point from when we were looking at calls that one week and it topped out here at a uh, 1686. We have a close over that. We have a close over the 921 cloud. You can see we're finally over that damn cloud. That's good. KDJ is positive. Volume increased just a little bit. That's a good sign. Also, finally, out of this longer term downtrend line, test one, test two, don't really have a test three rejection to support this being a crazy good trend line. Obviously, I like to see multiple rejections. You want to see it 
following the downside, very good. But overall, I mean, it's still breaking out of this, whether you have a third rejection or not. So there's some kind of shift here. And I showed you we're over the 921 cloud and we have a pretty good amount of room up to the 50 SMA before we hit that as well. So maybe we could get back up to, you know, the 18 area or something like that. With any kind of oversold play like this, where you're kind of sniping the lows or trying to time a bottom, or maybe you're just trying to find a contrarian value trade, something at a discount to where the drawdown risk is a little bit less than if you were to buy at highs. Sometimes it's good to get time on those kind of setups like Nike, WBA, they're all kind of at lows, right? So if you buy time on expiration, give it lots of time to deal with drawdown risk and maybe form a bottom, it might pay off. I really do like how this looks a little bit better than when we were looking at it last time back here, because we have that confirmed two bottom support plus they close over this and we're also over the moving averages so it actually looks better than when we were looking at sniping a bottom back here so even though it did pay for one day at a nice five percent run i feel like this looks a little bit better for the more medium to long term since we maybe have a pattern here we have a signs of a bottom we're back over the moving averages stuff like that so unity i'm looking at calls just be patient maybe buy time to deal with drawdown risk and really you could use 15 23 or even 15 flat as your risk off that gives you about a two dollar stock loss i would recommend you know a two dollar stop loss for something long term because it's a pretty good ways down like let's measure it out if we went from close all the way to here that's about 12 percent. so it's a pretty big stop loss and you'd want a big reward too so you'd want a two dollar stop loss you know two dollar profit so 17 to 19 uh, with a $15 stop loss, something like that. But obviously if you use options too, you can just use premiums. Like if it started falling back within the downtrend or something like that, even before 15, you can use that as a stop loss as well. So that's for Unity, looking at calls, be patient. Definitely looking pretty good here. All right, and on to the indexes. We're going over SPY first. So last week I didn't have any new levels for you because we closed all the way here. This was last Friday's close. We had to zoom down to the 15 minute time frame because there wasn't really any one day levels nearby other than 5.50. That's a good little mission away if you wanted to wait for that value area to get tapped. So one thing I did recommend on QQQ actually was just use your 15 minute 921 EMA combo. It's kind of your trend gauge. And that's really what it did all week. You can see it pulled in right here, kind of held up, bounced right there. It also bounced right here on Tuesday. We did break down a little bit right here, but overall the rest of the week, just really clean 921 EMA action. Finally broke under it right here. And you can see the trend is just pretty good at respecting the 921 EMA combo on the 15 minute. So that's all I did for QQQ last week on every single scalp I took basically. I basically just traded off the 921 combo and I was in for maybe five, 10 minutes and I got out because I really didn't have any levels to go off of last week. It was basically just a trend because when you're moving up vertically, vertical like this and you have no respected levels you have nothing like 550 nearby you have no obvious bounce levels or anything like that you have to just use the short term moving averages it's the only way to go about it but for this week we do have some new stuff we can mark so obviously we have a very aggressive sell at 562 i got rejected this uh 227 extension very accurately actually so this 227 percent actually comes from this measurement which we marked the last couple of weeks. We had a 127% react right here. We had the 1.618 active support back here. And then last week we were also looking for maybe 555 to act as res, but that did not happen. Actually, once we closed over the 555, that set us up for that big push candle right here. Also kind of act as support. So I guess the 555 did kind of come in handy, but only if you used as support not if you used as resistance. So make sure you draw out those fibs. If you want this 227% extension, you want this 200% extension, those are levels you can watch. Those are our higher time frame levels. But for right now, short term, we have 562, 555.83 to 555. That's kind of a zone to watch. And then we have 563.70s. Probably just round it up to 564. That is kind of the new big resistance. We could even mark it like that. So that's really it. I mean, those are kind of what you're going to want to scalp off this week. Maybe if we get back up to this area, you could maybe look for put scalps because you have obvious aggressive selling once it got up here. So if it approaches it again, you could look for scalps there for calls and trades to the upside. Obviously, I'd really like to get back down to your 555s down here. This is a good structure low to be adding at and scalping off of. And likewise, if we're not really getting up to here or getting down to here, you you want to just use your 15 minute 921 EMA combo. Maybe you can add a 15 minute 50 SMA as well. Sometimes it respects that. You see the 15 minute 50 SMA bounced right here. 
There's also a bounce right here. So you have your 9, 21 EMA combo as the cloud right here. And then we have the 15 minute 50 SMA as your more medium term. And then your 200 SMA is the dots. So I would add all four of those moving averages. So you have other levels because sometimes price doesn't want to get up to these big peaks and big lows. And you have to just kind of go with the trend and be adding at the 921 cloud, add at the 50 SMA, stuff like that, and use your MAs as a trend. That's really all I got for you this week on SPY. There's really no specific setup. I mean, we have obvious kind of dump here from the zone with very obvious support down here at 555. So that's kind of the levels that I'll be focused on. Not exactly sure if there's really anything mid range here to be looking for right now. Maybe you could look for this 560. If we can get back above 560, you can kind of scalp that real quick, maybe a dollar or two. Really only got up to 562 and 563 before you hit kind of a sell-off zone. So that's for SPY. I don't have any big one-day levels for you. These past couple of weeks, actually maybe even three weeks, we've had to go down to the shorter term time frames. And like I said last week, we kind of just highlighted to use the 15 minute 921 email combo on QQQ and likewise for SPY, because there's really no value area nearby. Like I said, it was all the way at 550. That's kind of the nearby support. So this is where we were at last week. We literally had nothing. So this was Friday's close. We had nothing other than 555, which is that Fibonacci extension from that measurement that's very old. And really, we didn't even do much with that 555 other than kind of maybe we rejected off it a little bit right here, kind of acted as support right here, but otherwise nothing crazy. But now we have very obvious kind of established selling. So you got a low here, a high here, you got a pivot right here, and a big rejection right here at the 227%. So that's for SPY. That's your short term levels for now for scalping, day trading. Like I said, said no big higher time frame levels except if you add your Fibonacci levels it's going to be from this high go down to this low make sure you have all these selected 1.618 1.272 2.272 the 200 percent then you have 2.618 as well all right and on to qqq which is very similar to spy we had no nearby value area no support really anything to go off of we didn't want to mark this little chop zone because there's really nothing to mark and overall we wanted to just use the 15 minute 921 ema combo so here's monday start we kind of just chopped off the 15 minute 921 combo all day kind of melted up broke out a little bit on Tuesday. Overall, still kind of wanted to hold that, but still held the 50 SMA on the 15 minute. And then it really got to business on Wednesday where we pulled into the 15 minute 921 EMA combo and we ripped off of that. We actually bought the dip at this spot right here on Wednesday because this back test was really good. And we also had open range low right here at a uh, 498. So we bought that popped up pretty nice. So very early because this ran even more, which sucked, but good trades. Like I said, we're still on a streak here. I'm taking, you know, 25%, 30%, stuff like that, not getting greedy. And then we also didn't have a value area until 486. So there's really nothing to buy off of in terms of obvious levels like we usually do. This week, we do have some new stuff. So we have a new aggressive sell high at 503, very aggressive selling. We also have 490. You could even mark this short term 499, probably round it up to 500. And there's also a little kind of bounce zone right here at 495. So if you want to mark all four of these, that would be smart. You have 503, 499, 62, 495, 17, and 490. So you got value area down here, got a mid-range point up here that could be a good scalp area if we can get over 495 again. You got big res at about 500 or 499.60s. And also a big, big inflection point at 50350s, which is a sell-off high. You also have 15-minute 200 SMA support right here. So it'll be in our best interest to hold this on the short term because if you lose this, it probably will flush back to 490. So at a pretty good kind of reclaim right here, the 200 SMA, bounce off the 200 SMA right here. Even on Friday, big candle off the 15-minute 200 SMA or these dots. So that was a big bounce zone. So it's probably pretty important that we hold this on the short term. If you're day trading or scalping, this uh 200 SMA is probably very important to hold also reclaiming 495 so getting back over 495 is holding a structure of sorts so it's the same thing as last week we don't have any higher time frame levels so we have to go down to the short term time frame stuff that's going to be from 503 to 490 that's kind of your zone with little levels here at 495 and 499.60s so make sure to mark those should be able to do something with them what you decide to do depends on how it's trading so if it gets back down into the lows you might look to buy the dip here. If we get a reclaim over 495, you might look to scalp that. If we get up to 499 or 500, and as a big rejection candle, you might try puts or put scalp. Same thing with 503s. Likewise, if it breaks over 500, 
You might have a scalp level up to 503 for calls. If you have a break of 495 and continuation, you might have a put scalp down to 490. If you have a break of 490, you might have a big scalp to the downside as well on the structure low back down to 486s. So it's all about reading price action and figuring out what's going to do. You have to use 15 minute candle closes, five minute candle closes. That's kind of how you confirm where price could go next. So if it flushes under 495s and then a big candle shoots back up and it closes back over 495 you might go long for a scalp likewise if you have candles keep closing under 495 you might trade back down to 490 with puts stuff like that so make sure to mark these and i would be surprised if price didn't respect them at some point you should be able to get a trade out of one of these assuming we can get to one of them and definitely just keep an eye out for my alerts in the chat in the discord stuff like that i've had a pretty good run on qqq nice five ten minute scalps making you know 24 30 percent stuff like that so that's all i got for you this week sorry i don't have any big like patterns or really anything clean to give you here on spy or qqq but these levels are better than last week so we have a little bit more to give you with more obvious levels and be able to trade off of all right last but not least we're going over the vix which really hasn't changed in over two months almost i mean this zone here we've kind of stayed in the same price range since may last week we really didn't change that so here's monday and here's friday's close so basically closed at the same spot we did last friday for vix so nothing has changed 1237 is still an issue 1182 is still an issue as long as volatility is holding these up you might see little pullbacks in the market we saw it on I think it was Tuesday, Thursday actually. So we had this big red candle on the SPY and a really big red candle on QQQ as well. And that was because we had VIX curling back up. You can see it really wicked hard off 1237 on this Thursday. So this big spike is very correlated with the SPY and the QQQ selling off. We'll go down to the short term time frames real quick and show you. So here was us basing all week from Monday. So here's Monday, held 1237 all day. Here's Tuesday again, held 1237. Here it is again on Wednesday, held 1237, ran up. You have very aggressive back and forth here on Thursday. So volatility sold off into 1237 again on Thursday and then really ran off of that. And that's when the market pulled back very aggressively. And that's the 1237 we've been covering every single week over the last few months. Price respects these. You want to mark these because if you are looking for day trades on the SPY and QQQ, you may be able to get a signal from the VIX. So if you have big aggressive bouncing like this, especially right at 1025, 10 in the morning, and you have multi bottom support as well, that might be a good signal the market is about to tank real quick. And you'll see a big spike in volatility, which we did get. So nothing's changed on that end. We had volatility kind of sell back off Friday. So we had a spike and then it sold back off for VIX Crush Friday, which on Fridays, a lot of times it does kind of crush for whatever reason. Maybe people taking off their hedges and also Fridays can definitely see some good rallies into the weekend. We still haven't seen like a big like blow off top in the SPY and QQQ. Like we really haven't seen like a big kind of breakout candle just yet. Not like a big like 2% day, you know, 2.5%, 3% day. We haven't really seen that in a while. It's kind of been a little bit smaller. And I think that's because volatility is staying at the same spot. And we're not seeing volatility sell off aggressively under the 1182 lows. If you get under that, I feel like that will set up for a FOMO type move in the SPY and the QQQ. You probably see SPY, you know, up 1.5, maybe more if we can get that big sell off in the VIX. We just haven't had that. So we've kind of been stalling out, but the market's still been going up. Don't get it twisted. Just because the VIX and volatility goes up a little bit doesn't mean the market can't go up too. Because even with these little spikes up to the 13s and the 14s, look how aggressively volatility sells back off. And that's when we see those big kind of pushes in the market. They're not huge rallies by any means. They're kind of slow, concise melt ups over days, over weeks. It's not like a big push up. So people are definitely still hedging here on VIX. Every time it gets to 1237, every time it gets to 1182, we see an increase or a bounce in the VIX. And that's likely because people are taking SPX puts as soon as we get to these zones at 1237 at 1182. VIX is priced based off of SPX options. So when you have VIX running back up, that means SPX puts are in demand and vice versa. So nothing new for you here on the VIX. Just be careful. It's still holding up the lows. I don't really see like a big signal in volatility until 1367 is broken or maybe getting over 14. So 14 to 1367 was kind of the magic zone or the magic number. That's probably why the SPY and the QQQ bounced back up on Friday because volatility sold off so aggressively. We didn't have volatility closing back over the 14s or really anything. It basically just got close to a high where it always sells off this past month or so. So getting over 1367 and 14 is key. If you want to see a real sell off in the market, that is. But if you're fine with the market, keep going up, you know, keep watching volatility when it gets up to 
these upper 13s and 14 area and look for it to sell back off because that's what it's been doing. It's just been repeating that. And maybe we won't see a big pullback in the market until August. In order to see a big pullback in August, like I said, we need to see it getting over 1367, getting over 14, and then eventually probably this 15 level right here. So that's really all I got for you this week. Like I said, don't really have any higher time frame signals on VIX. I showed you how it kind of gave some short term signals last week for day trading. I mean, you got multiple lows holding at the 1237 and we had a big sell off day kind of right here. And that was directly off 1237. So if you want to keep using these levels for short term day trades and letting it give you some signals on when to go long or short the market, it should definitely help a little bit. Likewise, if you're trying to go long and buy calls, you want to see volatility selling off aggressively from these spikes kind of like this here on monday uh, gapped up and it sold off the rest of the day that's good for the market that's very bullish that's probably a nice melt up day so i love you guys make sure you like comment and subscribe i'm going to get this chopped up sent out before it gets too late i love you and i'm out there's a reason why x trades is currently the fastest growing application on the market for sharing financial ideas with over 2.5 million dollars paid in the last two years to contributors users are flocking to see what trades the top traders on the leaderboard are sharing in real time if you're looking to grow your reputation as a trader on the internet or discuss your trading ideas with other reputable investors click the link below and get connected with the trading mentor today completely free of charge